Hi and welcome to 2017 paper 2 of the Junior Start Higher Level. This is question 7. So as always I suggest you um, pause this video, read the question, give it a go yourself. If you can't get an answer or you can always check the answer on the next page. Okay, this is there. Uh, if you want to send notes that this is coming from, just email me at shanetroy at gmail.com and I'll get them back to you as soon as possible. So we have question seven here. Uh, it's a 15D part. Okay, so it's a lot of marks going here for this work. Rosie and Gary are out for a walk and decide to estimate the height of a local tower. As you do, they have no measuring tape, so they use one of Gary's shoes. They measure the tower's shadow and find that it is 30 shoe lengths long. They measure Rosie's shadows and find for his shadow and find that it is four shoe lengths long. They know that she is 140 centimeters tall. Now, the if your one is standing, let's say this, this is the girl, uh, Rosie, whatever, she's casting a shadow, okay, and it's four shoe lengths. We know she's 140 centimeters tall. That gives us a triangle, okay, from her head to the base of the shadow. Now, the tower is casting a shadow of, was it 30? 30 shoe lengths. It will cast the same shadow at the same time of day, okay? It's going to create an, an equal triangle. Now, it's bigger in magnitude, but the, it's, it's congruent. Well, yes, yeah, the angles are all the same, okay? <clears throat> um, because the sides are in ratio to each other. So that's the basic gist of what's going on here, okay? Now you need to use, um, you have to find the height of the tower, okay? This uh, thing here. We know this is both 90 degree triangles, okay? So you can use the smaller triangle to find this angle, okay? And then that angle will be the same in the bigger triangle, and you can use trigonometry to find the, the side opposite here. So that's the basic gist of what's going on. So we're taking a chance to just make sure you understand that draw it. Now, I would say that with any trigonometry or geometry question, if you're not drawing it, you're probably going to go wrong. Okay, because just the drawing of it helps you to remember all the times you've been dealing with these questions before, and those memories start to flood back, and you give yourself the best chance to be successful. Okay. So we get stuck into it. Okay, so the small triangle there, and I've just taken these here from, um, from Moodle somewhere or whatever I got them from. Okay. Um, and you got the triangle with the four shoes and the 140 centimeters. Okay, I've taken away the any messing with the images of a girl or whatever and just made it the triangle. And you have the equivalent triangle here. Okay, so we're going to use the trigonometric ratios because it is a right angle triangle, the bow angle triangles. By definition, you're not actually told that, but a shadow will, you know, the base of a tower of a person will always make a right angle with the ground. Okay, so. The two formulas that would make sense here would be Pythagoras. Now, if you, you could use Pythagoras to find the hypotenuse, but you're not asked to find that length, okay? Um, you could then equate that across here um, with the, the, the two angles, okay? But that, again, <clears throat> would be messing, okay, in one sense. The smartest thing, or the easiest way I can think of to do it is to find this angle here, okay? And the angle here that I'm kind of marking, if I can get it done, is the same as the angle down here. So I've kind of already went through that. So what would I use in the smaller triangle to find that angle? Well, the three trigonometric ratios are sine, cos, and tan. I should have put them in here, but sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So will the sine ratio work? I'm looking for the angle. I have the opposite, okay, but I don't have the hypotenuse. Now I could find it and use sine then, but at the moment with the information I'm given, uh, I only have one of the three unknowns for the sine ratio. Okay, let's try cos, okay? So cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse in, in order to find the angle. So I have the adjacent, but again, I don't have the hypotenuse. So cos would be require more work in order to get to work. So the last one is tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent. I have the opposite side. I have the adjacent side. So I have two of the three unknowns. So I can use tan and use that to find the angle, okay? So now I have to do tan of the angle equals opposite of adjacent. Uh, that's 140 over 4. Okay. And I can leave it that if I want. Okay, I can divide it in and get a decimal or whatever. But if I'm using the big triangle here, I'm using the exact same ratio. Okay. Tan of an angle equals some height over 30. Okay. 
Now, it could have done a few different ways here. It could have actually found the angle and then used um, um, you know, tan of the angle, whatever. Or it could just keep it general, okay? So, if a tan of an angle equals 140 over 4, tan of the angle equals h over 30, then these two things are equal. Therefore, these two things are equal. If that happens a lot in maths to be able to do equal. It's basically what equating is. You're equating those two things together. Now, if you can cop that, once you have that statement done, again, there are other ways to do this, okay? Um, I have an equation of one unknown. Solve it out for h, so I'll cross multiply, okay? So I end up with 4h um, equals 140 over 30, divided across by the 4. So I've actually done it all in one go here, okay? In reality, I've just moved the 30, is all I've actually done. It was divided on the left, it was multiplied on the right, okay? So now, again, there are different ways of doing that, but whatever. Um, so I end up with this big sum, put it through the calculator, I end up with um, 1,050 centimetres, and they want my answer in metres, so it's very easy to miss that. There are, now, I came across this a few times, you need to know your breakdown of units, okay? There are 1,000 micrometres in a metre, there's 100 centimetres in a metre, there's 1,000 millimetres, there's 1,000 millimetres in a metre, there's uh, a thousand thousand micrometers, so a hundred thousand micrometers in a meter. There's a thousand meters in a, in a kilometer. So I'm not going to go through them in this question here. This time will go too long, but that's something that I would ex expect to know. Okay, it happened a few years ago. It was a question of the year, and a lot of people got it wrong. Now it's different uh, grade and subject. Um, they were saying it was 48 weeks in a year. I would have thought that everybody knew it was 52 weeks in a year. So things like this can catch people out. Um, it's just not familiar enough with them, okay, and it's just kind of thing you, you kind of you should know So basically I'm dividing that by a hundred, okay, how many hundred centimeters in 1050? There's 10.5 and that would equate to the number of meters, okay, and job done Yep. Okay, that's question seven. So thank you very much and see you on question eight